Hello, everyone. My name is Eli Mansbach, and I'm a graduate student at MIT. Our poster, titled Plus A is a Recorder of Past Magnetic Fields on Planetesimals, details, details the initial stages of a project we are working on to determine if Plus A, intergrowth of tetrahedonite and chemosite, is a viable paleomagnetic recorder. Plus A is ubiquitous in iron bearing meteorites, and therefore would widen the meteorites available for paleomagnetic analysis, not able to be studied by cloudy zones. In this project, we looked at the ungrouped iron meteorite Bacabrita. I've shown a picture of the plus site below. The higher relief grains are tetrachainite grains, and this lower relief is a chemosite matrix. To measure micro recipient of tetrachainite grains, we created an X ray magnetic circular dichroism image using X beam, which allows us to see the magnetization direction of the grains relative to the incoming X ray direction. Because our grains are so large, we're actually able to isolate the signal of individual grains in our XMCB images. I boxed two examples here. To measure microcivity, we applied increasing IRMs in steps of about 50, 50 millitesla and studied how the magnetization has changed. I've shown some equal area, equal area staring at plots here. And I've admitted everything between NRM and 250 because not much has changed in that time. This is easily seen with these color markers I use as, as examples. However, when we apply the 24 millitesla step, we see how the grains flip antipodally to the direction of the applied field, which is shown by this star. This is a little more easily seen in this figure, which shows the NRM and the 324 millitesla steps. This is something that we expect for tetratainite, this flipping in antipodal direction. And so are we expecting our coercivity somewhere between 250 and 324 millitesla? While these grains have a large coercivity and are likely to be remagnetized, we must also address what magnetization state they're in and whether that state can hold a remnants for a long time. To answer this, we use Merrill micromagnetic modeling to create a Butler Banerjee diagram for tetratainite which defines magnetic the main ranges based on grain length and actual ratio. Our magnetic modeling shown in the green gives a slightly different solution than analytical solution, with, which is a black. And we see that our back burrito plus our grains are probably are above single domain, but likely in a single vortex state. It's also interesting to apply uh, past cloudy zone studies on this diagram. And we see that while some cloudy zones are in a single domain state, others are in a single vortex state on our diagram. But considering that they're reported to have very uniform magnetization, this lends credence to the idea that magnetostatic interactions play a large part in cloudy zone domain states and magnetization. To conclude, the tetrahedonite in plus site has a microcurve of about 300 millitesla and is likely in a single domain or single vortex state. We also ran some um, unblocking time scale calculations and found that the unblocking time scale of such SV states is much longer than the age of the solar system. And therefore, plus the tetrahedonite would be capable of retaining magnetization from a planetesimal field about 4.5 billion years ago. However, to enable the use of plus IMP analysis, we must first need to understand more about how it acquires its magnetization. And as I said before, cloud zone islands that have a uniform magnetization can plot above the single domain threshold, suggesting magnetostatic interactions play a large role in island domain states. Thank you, and I'll answer any questions.